If you want to create confusion, anger, and rage at your next ensemble rehearsal, just ask one group of players to play quintuplets and the other to play sixteenth notes, and then bask in the chaos. Of course, playing quintuplets against sixteenths creates a five over four polyrhythm. But what is a polyrhythm exactly? A polyrhythm is two or more rhythms that are played at the same time that do not evenly fit into one another. The only common divisor that they have is one. These are polyrhythms because they cannot divide evenly into each other, and these are not polyrhythms because they do divide into each other evenly. Polyrhythms also have the idea of tension and release built into them, and this is more apparent the more complex the rhythms become. There's a point in the beginning where the two rhythms line up, and then as both rhythms progress, they become separated more and more, causing tension before coming back together after a certain amount of beats. The two against three is the most common and simplest polyrhythm you will find. This is sometimes also referred to as a hemiola. The music of Brahms uses the hemiola extensively. In this example, we can see that the left hand is in quarter notes, but the right hand above it is in eighth note triplets. I added some accents to make it more clear. And if we distill that first measure down to just beats, the three over two polyrhythm becomes very clear. For the less complex polyrhythms, the easiest way to both understand and perform them is to learn their composite rhythms and then assign a mnemonic phrase to help you remember the rhythm. A composite rhythm is the sum of rhythms happening in various parts. So for example, if one voice plays only eighth notes on the beats, and another voice plays only eighth notes off the beats, the resulting composite rhythm would be straight eighth notes. The composite rhythm of two against three is, and a great way to remember that is with the mnemonic hot cup of tea. The three against four, or the four against three, is the next most common polyrhythm. Chopin's Fantasy Impromptu is an excellent example of four against three. It's done so fast that it's hard to tell, but if you slow it way down, you'll be able to hear it. So the composite rhythm for four against three is, and the mnemonic that can be used is pass the goddamn butter. As we get more and more complex, use of composite rhythm word mnemonics becomes less and less useful. The five four composite rhythm is, and the composite mnemonic is, I'm looking for a home to buy. But you have to say it pretty awkwardly, and for me it doesn't really seem to help very much. And as you get even more complex, this gets less useful. So from five against four and beyond, I think it becomes easier to take a different approach to learn polyrhythms. There are two different charts that can be used to help out with this. The first is we take the larger number and write out that many columns. And then we take the smaller number and write out that many rows. So for five against four, we get a chart that looks like this. Then starting in the upper left hand corner on the first number, we circle it. And then we will draw a circle every four numbers throughout the chart until it lines up again. The left hand will play on every one, and the right hand will play every time there is a circle. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, one, two, three, four, five. 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 One. The other chart that we can use involves the lowest common multiple. We take the two numbers and multiply them together to find the lowest common multiple between them. For 5 against 4, this would be 20. We then write out 1 through 20 in two different rows. One gets an X every 4 beats, and the other gets an X every 5 beats. Assign your left hand to one row and your right hand to the other, and then count through in a similar way that we did in the last one. So let's try one more difficult one. 6 against 5. All the same rules apply. So we'll create 6 columns and 5 rows. Left hand takes all the 1s, and right hand will take every 5th note. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. If you like this channel and would like to support it, please consider checking out my Patreon.